Hey, uh, this is Saivar Pali. Today I'm going to uh, present uh, my understanding of solution three, uh, solution for assignment three here. So in assignment three, uh, we're going to, in this assignment, we, 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 we're going to perform, uh, 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 we, we're going to create and evaluate the nonlinear classifiers to classify uh, data here. So uh, to do that, I mean, we are uh, uh, going to import make circles uh, library from SQLM and uh, the other necessary uh, libraries. So once we uh, do that, what exactly we're, uh, we're gonna do here is we're gonna generate thousand uh, cir uh, circular data samples using uh, from make circles. And then once we do that, uh, what, we, what we were asked is to assign what are the values equals to one, uh, what are the label value equals to one that we're gonna store in positive index indexes. And then the values, uh, the labels, in Y, uh, if that equals to zero, then we are gonna save them in negative indices. And then once we do that, we're gonna plot these, uh, we're gonna visualize the data using the plot functions. So uh, to do that, uh, here in the code, uh, so we implemented, uh, so we loaded the libraries before, then we implemented make circles saying, uh, okay, uh, we need 100 samples and the factor uh, as 0.1. So the factor here is, uh, it's the ratio of the bigger circle, uh, ratio between the bigger circle and the smaller circle. So here we are setting it as 0.1 and the noise as 0.1. So uh, noise, noise in this um, here is the noise generated in the samples. If the noise is too high, the samples will be very random. I mean, it, uh, you know, they don't, uh, necessarily need to be circular. You know, when the when the noise is high, instead of being in circle, they would be randomly placed somewhere due to the noise. And then we are using random state forty two. So if someone else is running the code, we're going to get the equal uh, or you know, similar samples. So then once we get the sample, once we get the features and the labels in X and Y, then uh, we're going to compare the uh, labels in Y. So for whatever the uh, labels in Y equals to one, we're going to store it in positive index. And then for what are the values which are equals to zero in Y, we're gonna store it in negative index. So once we do that, we're gonna plot the data here. So again, uh, we are using the figure uh, um, plot function. Uh, we are setting up the figure ratio as 10 is to seven and then uh, dots per inch as 80. And once we do that, we are plotting the positive indexes, indexes and we are setting the color as red and we are labeling it as positive examples. And same we are gonna do for uh, negative so on what are the values in x for negative indices uh, we're gonna set those colors as blue and then call it negative examples and then we're gonna call our x axis, x -axis as x1 and then y axis as x2 and then we're gonna plot the visualize the data so once we do that as we can see here uh, the blue is the bigger circle and the red is the inner circle so here the ratio between the blue circle and the red circle is 0.1. That's what we specified. And since the noise is 0.1 here, we could see the points, the labels are like, you know, uh, the data is kind of disturbed. It's not maintaining a perfect circle. So once we generated the data here, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna split the data. What we are asked to do is we're gonna uh, ask to split the data into 80 is to 20, 80 is to two, which is like you know 80 percent for training and 20 percent for testing. So once we do that using the SVC, we're gonna perform three types of classifiers. So one would be the linear classifier, and then the polynomial classifier, and then the RBF classifier, RBF kernel. Uh, so uh, to split the data again, uh, we're gonna need train test split library that we already imported. And then we are performing X train, X train, Y train, Y test equals to uh, train test speed. And then we are specifying the test size as 20% because we need 20% of the test, <coughs> test samples. And then the remaining data, will, which is 80%, will go to the training samples. So once we do that, then uh, using SVC for kernel uh, linear, we're going to train it for linear, poly, and RBF. So we're going to set the kernel to a linear here and then train it. Uh, using the train samples, and then uh, we're gonna set it to poly, uh, and then we're gonna train the samples again, and then we're uh, gonna set the kernel to RBF, and then the train uh, train the samples again. So once we do that, we're gonna print uh, 
the accuracy of these models. So once we do that, as we see for linear, it is 0.3 and for poly and RBF, 1.1 and 1. So why uh, for linear, uh, since the data is in circular in shape, when, when we are performing the linear regression, it uses a straight line to split the data. So when it is using the straight line to split the data for a non-linear data, uh, the accuracy will be very low. So that's why, uh, you know, when we are implementing this linear model here, we see the accuracy as 0.3, but whereas for poly and RBF, where they can classify the nonlinear data, we see the accuracy as uh, 100%. Thank you.